we're just doing a teach-in in the office of the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, and we were kicked out of the office and told to do our teach-in in the hall. So we went to the hall to do our teach-in, but then we were kicked out of the hall as well. There's no place in the people's house to talk about the U.S. enabling a genocide in Gaza. Well, we were very upset by what we heard yesterday, Jay. But the, the point is, what we this heard yesterday was genocide. not truthful. We heard a lot of talk about the devastation in Gaza being just a consequence of war and that, you know, children die in war. And this was in self-defense. Past five months into this siege where 1.1 million people are now in the state of imminent danger from starving to death, where we see war crimes unfold on the daily, that this kind of rhetoric, continuing to argue for these things, is not just unconscionable, but also just simply false. So we are here to do a teach-in, and the teach-in is about who is Mike Johnson, his views about Israel, how did he get those views about Israel, how he became a genocide-enabling politician. I just want to give some of the statistics, some of the information that all of us are very familiar with, but just to dispel some of the myths um, when we came in here yesterday about this being, quote, you know, a just war and these just the consequences of uh, what happens when countries invade, which we know is not the case. So today, confirmed almost 32,000 people have been killed, 70% of them women and children. We know there's approximately 8,000 people under the rubble, and these are just the numbers we have confirmed. Over one million people are at stage five crisis level of hunger, which the UN Secretary General said yesterday is the highest number we have ever seen in history of that many people at stage five level of hunger. Mm -hmm. We know people have been resorting to eating animal feed to stay alive. We know people are breaking their fast for Ramadan with grass, and we know that they're being poisoned as they continue to do this. We know that there's been a full blackout for months and that 80% of the groundwater is contaminated and all wastewater treatment systems are damaged. We know there's a new term, wounded child, no surviving family, which has been created in this quote war as Israel has indiscriminately bombed all of Gaza. And we also know that they have been expanding in the West Bank, that 3,500 additional housing units were announced in February and that 400 Palestinians have been killed by increased settler violence and IDF violence since October 7th. 2020, uh, Mike Johnson was sponsored uh, to go on a trip to Israel. And it was sponsored by the sort of un unknown, kind of like smaller organization called the 12 Tribe Films Foundation. It was there where he met with Israeli officials, IDF generals, and a right-wing think tank known as the Kohelet Policy Forum. An example of the kind of things that this think tank calls for is an all-out siege. It calls for uh, explicitly an ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians in Gaza. It's one of the organizations that helped Netanyahu really alter the judiciary, the judiciary to his favor, um, allowing him to remain in power. Mike Johnson, he was sponsored by this organization. They spent a $35,000, which again, I, I mentioned that this is a smaller organization. This, this was about a quarter of their entire revenue for the year. They can move. And, they can move uh, away. Sorry, officer, what's the problem? We got a reporter of protesters in here. We're doing a teach-in on what the situation is in Gaza. Yes. You gotta, gotta get out. This office needs to hear the information that we're giving out because this office All right, let's go. Let's keep moving. a genocide in let's Gaza. Let's keep moving. Speaker Mike Johnson came back from this trip where he met with all these right-wing sort of policy people in Israel. He met with members of the Likud party, which is also a far-right party in Israel, with Netanyahu, with the, a lot of IDF generals, and came and said, actually, it's perfectly fine in Palestine. There's no occupation really going on. They're not oppressed whatsoever. When in reality, like one of the places he visited, Hebron, it's one of the cities where you can most clearly see sort of that apartheid system working in place because people have different streets they're allowed to be on. 
the sort of the way the segregation is working in that city is also very clear with like military boundaries and checkpoints. Before that, he also had a trip in 2017 that was sponsored by APAC. Fast forward to November 2023, not too long ago, one of the first things Mike Johnson did is pass a bill with aid to Israel. Ooh. For this action, for this action, Mike Johnson received in his mail a nice $100,000 gift from APAC. I don't know that the people that are supplying him his information are pro-Zionist people who say, I'm gonna read one of the quotes from Abby Avalo, who took them around when they were in Israel in 2020. He said in January 2024, Israel cannot achieve victory without destroying these extremists. To save Gaza from the destruction this inherently involves, those who wish to leave must be given the opportunity. They must exit to Egypt. As for extremists themselves, they should have the choice to live anywhere but near Israel. This is a moral imperative. So this is the kind of rhetoric that comes out from the people taking our speaker around, calling for ethnic cleansing, as Taz has pointed out, as the solution to genocide. We were forced to hold our teach-in in the hall, and we are not allowed to show our signs, even signs that speak the truth that people need to see, that this speaker is a genocide enabler. This is illegal for us to do here, so we'll turn it around again. So speaking of turning around, just think how upside down horrific things are in this country where if you support genocide, you are elevated. And if you oppose genocide, you are censored in Congress. And if you are constituents, citizens who want to stop our governments from supporting genocide, we are constantly risking arrest and oftentimes are arrested. We represent the majority of American people who are saying cease fire now and are saying no more money to Israel. But in these halls of Congress, we are not represented. We have only been able to find two Republicans, Tom Massey and Marjorie Taylor Greene, who have said they will not vote for more money to be sent to Israel. That is quite remarkable. Uh, there are more Democrats who have said they won't, uh, but it's only 14 of them right now that we have found. So we are waiting um, and we have been fighting against any bill that includes any more money to Israel. And so far, we have been able to stop that from going through. But we are very concerned that there is pressure on Mike Johnson to put a bill on the floor, a separate one for Ukraine and a separate one for Israel. And we know, given how Congress is bought out by the pro-Israel lobby groups, if such a bill gets to the floor, it will pass. So now we're going to the office of the Democratic leader in the House, Hakeem Jeffries. So we get context about Mr. Jeffries. Just in 2023 alone, he received $300,000 from APAC for his campaign. Mr. Jeffries is one of the largest recipients of APAC funding. and. When APAC was here last week, he actually spoke at one of their dinners at was an invited special guest, upon which he repeated a quote that he's been saying since 2014, Israel today, Israel tomorrow, Israel forever. You guys might have heard that that is taking from George Wallace, Alabama governor in 1963, in which he said, segregation today, segregation wow. tomorrow, segregation forever. We're just here to give some facts about Hakeem Jeffries. He's been a, a very, very big champion for Israel. Speeches and his policy and his rhetoric. He's called Israel New York City's sixth borough. He's also many times reaffirmed, even as a controversial thing among the Democrats, that Jerusalem is Israel's capital and he continues to receive a lot of money and puts Israel as his top priority even above his own constituents.